it is the privilege of the Christian person to know and understand these things. Of course, being a believer, I would like to clearly state, I have no idea when Jesus is going to come. But looking at all the things that are happening, I believe that it is soon. And so that is the statement that I want to make. We are not in the business of predicting when Jesus will come. We are in the business of living our lives in such a way that we do not get embarrassed, that we do not get dispossessed, that we, we give honor to God, especially when He returns, because He will. There are all these teachings. Even non-Christian sects have teachings about the coming back of Jesus Christ. And so, I will say though, the best thing for you to do is to read your Bible and to let God instruct you and talk to you. Now, life of course, as we know it, is never easy. I've said this again and again. And so, every day we experience things that are cause of hardship for us. We have hardships because of the fact that life is not easy. Decisions every day become more and more complicated. As you age, some people think because you have um, resources, maybe money, maybe property, maybe I don't know, real estate, uh, precious metals, that life becomes easy. No. Life still is hard. Because life is not a question of just finances. And some may have easy situations on the finances, you know. Nowadays in America, they say the rich just keep getting richer, the poor keep getting poorer, and the middle class is eroding. That is a sad commentary. But the truth of the matter is, we are a Christian nation founded on Christian principles. I don't believe that the guarantee of a Christian principle, of course, we are, we are told in Scripture that we are to prosper. But I don't believe that Affluence is something that is guaranteed according to the teaching of Scripture. So I cannot sit here and say, oh, look, I'm going to teach you Scripture and you will make money and you will not have any financial problems. Far from that, I don't believe that. But there are people that do not have any problems financially. However, there are other problems in life because life is not a, bit, a little bit of a five, five, ten compartments, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Your love life is not separate from your spiritual life, which is not separate from your family life, which is not separate from your work life. You have a life. And so a lot of times, we face difficulties, and difficulties happen in life. May I say that? And so today I want to encourage you, because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, But as it is written, and, and, and may I say, that word, it is written, that is not something like what I write. You know, I write some things, I write essays, I write poems, I write articles, I write my sermons. But the kind of weight that my writing carries is nothing compared to what is in Scripture. And in Scripture, as we know from previous studies, Scripture is God breath, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so here it is written, verse, verse 9 of Corinthians chapter 2, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard. And I'm going to stop there for a little while before we define the next portion. The eyes have not seen or the ears have not heard. What is this? This is a, somebody who is deaf mute or uh, you know, blind? No. We're talking about a person who is normal, who has the ability to see with their eyes, who can hear with acuity, but, okay, I must remind you that what you see, what you hear in this world, what you can touch, what you can feel, what you can quantify is not the most important thing in your life. In your life, there is a spiritual battle that's going on. And the battle, the stakes are your souls. The battle is for our souls. The battle is for where we're headed. Because God wants us to be with Him. And let me just plainly say, He wants you to be with Him in heaven. Upward, upward bounce. And then, of course, there is the enemy, there is the devil, who wants you to be in hell. And yes, there is a hell. And if we're not careful, if we make the wrong decisions, we will go to hell. But praise God, God does not want us to do that. He gave the sacrifice by giving His only begotten Son so that our sins may be forgiven, so that we can go to heaven. But may I remind you, what you see 
is a lot of times what you feel, what you hear, what you can quantify, what you can touch, what you can sense with your senses, the physical, the things that are of the world. They are important, but not as important as the spiritual battle that is happening for you. And so you have to be able to look past that. That's why it says here, I has not seen nor ear heard. It is not putting down the senses. It is not saying that they are ineffectual or useless. No, but instead, it is not as important as what we have not seen yet. What is happening in the spirit. And so we continue on. Nor have entered into the heart of man. Okay, so the eyes, the ears, what enters into the heart of man. His intellect, his emotion, his instincts. Okay? The things, the last portion of the verse, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, we are preoccupied by life. We are preoccupied by life. The one thing, again, I testify to this God kit here. When it was given to me by the congregation. I never pined for it. I saw other people have it. They said, it's on sale. You can buy your own. I said, yes, probably. But you know what? I did not buy it. Because I did not pine for it. But when it was given to me, it was such a blessing because I wasn't looking for it. It just there. When it came in the box and they said, don't drop your box. It just hit me. Wow. I have an iPad. I have an iPad. Something that I deem useful. Something that I would like to have. But I was not pining for it weeks ago trying to see if I can get my hands on it. Now, in our life, we are affected, led, pushed forward, influenced by the things that we can see. By the things that we touch. By the things that we feel. And a lot of times, we correlate the importance of that to first place. When in truth, there are things that we have not seen. And let me describe one of the things that you have not seen. The last portion of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9. The things which God has prepared for those who love Him. The statement here is not about those who are prosperous or strong or have been good managers of their assets or who have studied with uh, intellectual prowess or who speak well. These are not, we're not talking about weak or strong or sick or well. We are talking about the things that will be given to you. The things that are prepared. Prepared, okay? This is a God who can create the world in seven days and He prepares for you the things that you would receive from Him if you love Him. And so I say to you, every day, attitude matters. And if our attitude is... Even though my circumstance is this way. If my circumstance is lowly, I will love God. In my low circumstance, in my hard circumstance. If my circumstance is high and I am uplifted up and I am you know, prosperous and famous and powerful, then I will love God. And if you are able to do that, the things that you experience in your lowliness or in your highness, in your status in life, it will be superseded by what God can give to you. But God wants to give to you only if you have a relationship with Him. That's what happens. You get a job because you have a relationship. That's the easiest way to get a job. You know, My wife and I, we have a relationship. That's why I can kiss her. I can hold her. I can touch her. I can lay in bed with her. And I don't care who finds out because we have a relationship. Well, in this case, although that is a, an extreme example, I might say a lowly example of what God wants to do, we need a relationship with Jesus. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And in these times, these uncertain times, when we can feel that the coming of Jesus is near, we need to be able to say we have a relationship with Him. And so may I say to you, I have a prayer that goes like this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. Give me eternal life. And make me the kind of person you want me to be. If you feel that this prayer is something that you would be willing to say, then I ask, let's pray together as we close in this study. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Today is the day to be saved. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me eternal life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. Lord, make me the kind of person you want me to be. In Jesus' name. In this perilous time, may you live a blessed day. May you live a blessed life.
Amén.